In this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can go a bit deeper into social media and maybe make a dry industry or something that maybe people you think people don't wanna hear about into something inter interesting as you can build an audience and help your organization grow into the future. Okay, let's talk about some of the benefits of social media for your organization. Obviously, everybody thinks straight away about getting more customers. Now, yes, of course, you can get more customers, but it is a long game and it is something that needs to be done in perpetuity. I see too many organizations do a binge or a sprint on social media and then kind of drop the ball. I've seen that most recently with a couple of my colleagues' organizations and friends' organizations where they sort of went really hard with social media, but then kind of fell into a black hole. Now that's not a bad thing, and that's gonna happen from time to time, and certainly here on our social media journey at Best Practice, we've been up and down. So if you're thinking it feels like a lot of hard work and you're not quite sure how to approach it, I think it's really important to just get started and start thinking about what you could do. The most important word that I wanna to talk to you about with social media is the word perpetuity. It's something that's just gonna be part of lead generation and brand awareness for your organization into the future. And I think the most important thing with social media, and I'm really only now starting to realize it, is it's not about lead generation, it's about brand building. Chet Holmes in The Ultimate Sales Machine. It's a great book, it's worth reading. Make sure you add it to your library of books. Chet Holmes in The Ultimate Sales Machine talks about branding and awareness over selling. And he talks about only 3% of your potential buyers are ever in the market at any one time. So if you can think about the length of your buying cycle and you can think about that only 3% of your buyers are ever in the market at any point in time, then of course 97% of the time needs to be spent branding. In our culture here in Australia, we typically go for word of mouth referral. So what'll happen is we need something or we were in the market for a product or service, we'll ask around our friends and we'll, we'll use social influence, if you like, to say, hey do you, know, hey, do you know anybody? Do you know a contractor who can work on my house? What's the best bed to buy? What's the best device to buy? What best TV should we buy? What Xbox or PlayStation, you know, what gaming console should we get for our kids in the house? So Australians typically use word of mouth referral. Now that's not unique to Australia, it's definitely all the way around the world. So the more that you can be up on social media and you can be exposing yourself and making yourself, you know, making the world aware that you exist, the more likely people are gonna be and say, hey, check out this person on Instagram or check out this person on LinkedIn or check out this person on Facebook and then you're gonna have a place for people to go to see you and do their due diligence on you. Astute customers and yourself included in this marketplace right now in 2021 are more likely to do their research on a product that they're gonna buy or a service they're gonna buy or a purchasing decision. They're more likely to do their research on social media. And so for organizations, if you haven't started, it's not looking good for you if you've got no social media because your audience and your potential customers are going to Facebook pages and Instagram pages and LinkedIn pages and websites to check in on whether your content is fresh, updated, and they're looking to see whether you're a brand that they want to buy from. They're looking online. So if you're just not online and you're not as exposed as you should be, then it's gonna be starting to work against you. So it may be a case of actually now it's time to get on social media and start promoting your organization because you may have missed the boat and your competitors may already be ahead of you. In Beyond the Hockey Stick, the book by McKinsey, consulted the big McKinsey Consulting Group, what is talked about in that book is what's happening with sophistication of buyers in the market. And really the question with regards to your business strategy for 2021 is, yes, everybody is working really hard, but is your strategy better than your competition? And really to win in 2021, you're really gonna be needing to think about how can I be better than my competition? There is no doubt that everybody is working really, really hard. It's about who's got the smartest and most effective strategy that wins. So if you are considering social media for your organization, I think now is the time to get in and start experimenting. Okay, let's talk about how it's influenced our business. What is happening now with our business is we've got momentum. We've been doing lots of social media for seven years. In 2021, we really ramped it up. We had a thousand percent growth in our social media activity from an already high base. In 2021, we produced over 36,000 individual social media posts that were not just copy pasted, they were all uniquely created creative content for each of the platforms that we promote on. Each of the platforms is very different, it has a diff different mindset, a different ethos, and people react differently. If you think about using LinkedIn, 
If you have a LinkedIn account, you're gonna be in a different mindset to if you are sitting on a couch at home surfing Facebook on a mobile device or looking at Instagram. You might look at Instagram quickly while you're having lunch during the day. You might look at LinkedIn at night when you're doing professional development. So it's really important to be thinking about how you use those platforms because your audience will use them differently as well. That's not to deter you from doing it. It's just that you can't copy and paste and send posts to every single platform. So what I want to talk to you about now is starting to think about how it's helped your business. Here in our business, it's helped us with brand awareness. It's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. So having social media and a social media presence here at Best Practice has helped people to know who we are. It's helped people to know what we do. In all of the posting that we do, we run lots of webinars, we do lots of individual posts on different platforms, people are getting to know who we are, know what we do. So what's happening now is word of mouth referral is happening for us here at Best Practice at scale. And people are saying, hey, check out this page, go follow this page, because I think you're in the market for that particular service. And we are now starting to get lots of leads and about half the leads we get in here at Best Practice are from our social media activities and about 25% of the leads we get in here at Best Practice are from our paid advertising activities. Let's talk about quantity over quality. It's very important when you get started with social media to let your audience decide what is quality, not you decide what is quality. I appreciate that you might wanna take some time to really control how you look and feel in your brand, but I can honestly say that in the beginning, nobody is watching. It's really important to do that when lots of people are watching down the track. So it's really important to just get out there, to just practice, to have a go, and set yourself a quantity target. Without the quantity target in the early days, then you're not gonna get practice. And so really having a quantity target and a high quantity target is gonna give you the ability to do more practice, more repetitions. So here at Best Practice, we've been doing a lot of practice. We're starting to get a lot of data come back and we're starting to really find out what the audience wants. So let me give you an example. If you did one post once a week in 2020, you would have produced 50 posts. Here at Best Practice, we did 1,000 posts a week, we did 36,000 posts. And it wasn't about spamming the marketplaces, it was about learning. So we did 36,000 repetitions, and someone who posted once a week would have done 52 repetitions. Who do you think's had more practice? Who do you think's learnt more? Who do you think's really gotten into the audience and really understands what's happening with the platform, the algorithm, the people that are watching? So social media has really helped our business grow. It's helped our team grow and evolve. We've pushed really hard on high quantity. Uh, it's really about adding value. And what we do is we use a filter. The post needs to be educational, inspiring, and entertaining. And those are the three things that we make sure we check every post and we're thinking about, is it educational, is it information, if you like, or is it knowledge, and it is it inspiring or entertaining. And so that's really important as you go through the process to actually start using social media to grow your business. The one final point I wanna make in this particular video in terms of how social media has helped our business is it's galvanized our team. Over the last five years, I've seen a significant cultural change in our business and an alignment of people. So people looking to come to work here at Best Practice can look at our social media up front and they know what they're in for at Best Practice. You can see behind the scenes, you can see the team members and you can do your own due diligence. So if you're thinking about coming to work here at Best Practice, you can get a bit of a gauge on our organization before you turn up for the interview. And it's really helped us to polarize our team around a particular value set. We've got three key values here at Best Practice that we're friendly, we're empowering, and we're progressive. In our social media activities, that you know, within our social media activities, those values are coming across where we like to educate people and we're working to educate people and empower you guys with tools, principles, thoughts, concepts to run your organizations, grow your businesses, do the meaningful things that you want to do. And that is now happening inside here in our best practice team. And that's probably the best thing. We've been able to assemble an amazing team that are doing amazing work. And as a business owner and a business leader, that takes pressure off me every day as we attract and retain great talent that's helping our business grow into the future. So that's how social media has helped our business. I know this has been a long video. I would encourage you to just get in and get started. We're gonna put all the links to our social media handles in the description below this particular video so you can check out all of our different platforms. There's a famous saying that says, good artists copy, great artists steal. I'd encourage you to copy and or steal the content that we're producing, make it your own, and follow our lead. We've had a lot of practice, we're getting a lot of traction with what we're doing here at Best Practice. I'd encourage you guys to get into some momentum and just get out and get started. 
If you don't see me on any of those social media handles, you're definitely gonna see me right here next time on Best Practice TV. If you wanna see me on a recurring basis, hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments, yes or no, was this video useful for you? Is it motivating and inspiring you to just get started, do a couple of social media posts today, start practicing and see if you can get into a routine because I guarantee it's gonna help your business in more ways than one. I wish you well.